Welcome, my darlings, to my humble chateau. Please make yourself very comfortable. Relax your mind and release your imagination to me. I will bring you a story to entrance and entertain. Perhaps a frightening one. Perhaps a steampunk. Perhaps a bit of mythology. Anyway, sit back. Enjoy. Enjoy. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The Guard of Cell Block 13 by JXB Paperboy. There was a guard assigned to Cell Block 3 at the mental facility where Dr. Q worked. He was not quite the towering figure, but most definitely taller than the average male. He was lanky and fit and twirled his guard stick everywhere with a mood befitting that of a cat. There were only seven patients in cell block three, but these patients were not like the others. Subject 14, Sean, as he was known before, taunted him from the shadows of his cell. Subject eight through 12 kept to themselves aside from occasional outbreaks of freedom cries. But Subject 13, however, would watch him with candid eyes, and the guard would glance at her with eyes identical to hers. This guard's name was Alex Twight, and he had been hired no less than two years prior. His eyes were blue and his mind was scheming. There was someone he wanted to break out, under the guise of darkness on the anniversary of a certain night. There were two voices that accompanied this guard, not unlike Subject 13's ordeal, although these voices were content with themselves. Their names were Di, the Brash, and Egio, the Gentleman. They spoke to Shade throughout the long shifts but they rarely spoke during his sleep. It was a cold evening one night, as the guard, whose nickname is Shade, and that is what he shall therefore be called, roamed cell block three. It was a normal night, as normal as any night could be at a mental facility. Fourteen shook his bars, while the others either huddled in a corner or tried to sleep amidst the voices in their heads. Shade had been pacing the halls, whistling a tune he knew someone in the cells knew. A sharp yelp came from one of the cells, but Shade took his time to the disturbed. He opened cell 13 casually, as he'd done for the last two years, and calmly looked up at the ceiling, where Subject 13 was being held by invisible hands. And Shade saw three people beside Subject 13, a woman with a ripped-out cheek, and two men, a blonde and a ginger, holding the girl three feet off the ground. They're at it again, Di complained. May as well get it over with. Egio's calm voice echoed in Shade's mind. When will these ruffians leave the poor girl alone? Shade adjusted his cap and pulled out his baton. Blink, blink, why do you let these people bully you? The blonde man let the girl go and floated down from the ceiling to him. He was a big man, despite the missing leg he had. His torso was nearly invisible to the naked eye. Yet Shade, Di, and Egio saw him perfectly as if he'd been fully materialized in their world. Shade smiled and swung his baton. Di launched himself from the baton, materializing into a ghostly shadow of Shade and colliding with the blonde ghost, dragging him to the ground. The other ghost, holding Thirteen, dropped her 
and swooped down, his legs trailing a path behind him. Shade pulled his arm back and thrust his baton forward. Egil spun forward, yet another shadow of his host, driving an elbow into the soul's chin. The woman with the ripped cheek howled at Thirteen, lunging towards her like a fury ripped apart at the face. Only a single nail left a scratch on Thirteen's cheek before Shade grabbed Wendell's wrist and twisted it, knocking his baton against her head. That, he exasperated, will be enough from you, Wendell. Marcos, Fred, you two should be ashamed of yourselves. The two male ghosts looked at each other woefully. With only a hint of mist, the three ghosts were replaced by many more. Two women with identical faces and holes in their chests, a skinny man with a hole in his head, another man missing an arm, and three younger girls of varying heights who were covered in bruises and cuts, with their pants hanging by threads. Di and Egio regrouped to shade, brandishing their own versions of batons. The ghosts lashed out at them, and they retaliated together, grinning like madmen. Die for the sheer delight of adrenaline, Egio for showing the ruffians their place, and Shade for the chance to change his daily routine of marching back and forth. Within moments, the ghosts gave up, and Subject Thirteen slumped down on her bunk, shaking and sobbing. Shade put his baton away and locked Thirteen alone in her cell. The voices around her whispered, and Di slapped the bars, screaming at them to quiet down. Thirteen flinched and hunched herself over next to her pillow. Igio tapped his baton against the bars, callously waking up the other cell members. Shade nodded to him and grinned widely, as if he were possessed by an imp. His radio crackled to life, as the chief called in for a routine check-in. Chief to Shade, checking in over. Shade put a hand to the receiver and checked in. All good down here, Chief. Nothing to report. Over. Ten four, Shade. If you wouldn't mind coming to my office for a few minutes, someone will be down to take your spot in a few. Over. Di and Egio looked at each other, then to Shade himself as he clicked his radio. Roger that, Chief. Over. As the trio began their walk, Di and Egio floated alongside Shade. Di bombarded them with mundane, interesting, and explicitly appalling questions in a shrill voice. Why would the Chief need to see us? We ain't done shit. You know that. I bet he wants to... F Egio stepped through Di, causing Di to lose focus on this plane of existence. Right. Our impulsive friend here heralds a good point, dear host of ours. What could our dear chief possibly want with us? Shade glared at the two of them. It's probably because you two won't keep it down while I'm around my co-workers. I've told you before, only come out to speak to me when I'm truly alone. No people, no cameras, absolutely no one. Di floated into his vision, smiling devilishly. And what did we do? Shade swung his hand through him, distorting his form again. You started licking the backside of a co-worker's neck. Di chuckled like a child, while Egio folded his arms and floated along Shade like a familiar. How informal of you, Di. You only licked his co-worker's neck because it was a woman. Disgusting. Think of our mother. Di shouted a laugh. Ha ha ha! Egio! Dear old friend! <laughs> you and I both know our dear host Shade never knew his mother. <laughs> Di giggled childishly while Egio glared at him. Shade knocked on the door to the chief's office. The door opened with a creak 
and an old, authoritative voice came through the cracked door. Come in. Sitting in a small office, cluttered with papers, at a desk much older than the man sitting in it, and quite possibly the building it sat in, was a man that was certainly older, but not old. Head of Security Chief Peter Gates sipped his coffee with quiet orchestral music in the background. He was staring at a computer monitor. Again, <laughs> so old one would wonder if it was older than the chief himself, and slowly turned his head to shade as he closed the door to his office. So quoth this raven. My darlings, this is part two to interview with subject 13 that I read a while ago. If you don't remember it, I'll put a link, um, a card here and a link at the end screen. I believe there will be more coming. And so we'll just have to wait for that. As you can hear, I am still not in tip top shape, but I can speak and uh, not lay on the floor dying. <laughs> on Saturday, I will have the answer to which of the three stories I'm going to narrate first. I'm still weighing the vote count, though I think I know which one it will be. And I do promise I will do the other two if you really want them after. That should last us through the winter, my dears. Nice and cold. That will be our Saturday videos. I uh, want to thank you all again for being so wonderful and listening to my little stories. There's a few things I'd like to do, some changes in the future. We shall see. But, my darlings, have a wonderful Thursday. And I will be back with our new series. Either Turn of the Screw or The Mysterious Affair at Styles or Sherlock Holmes. What will it be, my darlings? You'll find out on Saturday. Bye-bye. <laughs>